Hello and welcome to Droix. We have the eagerly anticipated Ambernick RG552 sample for review today. We will be unboxing it and taking a closer look at its features, including the Android and Linux operating systems. Then we will run a bunch of emulators and compare the performance of them between the two operating systems. As always, let's get started with the unboxing. First up, we have the Ambernic RG552 handheld, which we will show in more detail shortly. Next, there is a US charger and UK plug adapter. We will include a converter if you're purchasing in a EU country. Under the packaging is a USB Type-C cable for charging. There is a user guide which is in full English and covers everything you need to get started. There's two micro SD cards. The 16 gigs card contains the Linux operating system and the 64 gig is a storage card. Last but not least, there are some screen wipes and screen protector to fit on your screen. The Ambernic RG552 measures 7.8 by 3.3 by 0.7 inches and weighs 353 grams. The IPS touchscreen measures 5.36 inches with a resolution of 1920 by 1152. On the left you can find a select button, classic D-pad and clickable left analog stick. On the right you can find the start button, four gaming buttons and clickable right analog stick. Along the top are left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There's a mini HDMI port which you can use to connect to your TV or monitor for large screen gaming. There's a 3.5mm headphone jack and two USB Type-C ports. One is for charging and the other is for connecting peripherals to. On the bottom you can find two speakers on either side. There are two micro SD card slots and reset and function buttons in the middle. On the back you can find two finger grip pads and the fan intake area. The fan is very quiet and barely noticeable even under full load with low volume on your music. The RG552 is available in two colours, black and bronze grey. Compared to the amazing RG351MP you can see that the 552 screen is a fair bit larger. But when compared with the GBD XP, the ultra wide screen is far larger. Personally, I prefer the RG552 widescreen as it offers the best compatibility with Android apps and emulators. The RG552 uses the Rockchip RK3399 processor, which has 6 cores running up to 1.8 GHz. The graphics processor is a Mali T860 MP4. There's 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage for Android. It's powered by two 3200 mAh batteries, which will give you up to 6 hours depending on the usage. A very brief comparison between the RG552 and GPD XP with Geekbench 5. The RG552 scores 266 on single core and 714 on multi core, with the GPD XP scoring 501 and 1601 on their respective cores. If you would like to see more benchmark comparisons, let us know in the comments. There are two operating systems on the RG552. Android 7.1 is built into the storage and is booted into without the 16 gigs micro SD card. You can use the touchscreen or controls to navigate the menus just like how you would on your phone. There's a bunch of emulators pre-installed which may take a little setting up initially to locate the correct games folder. At the time of making this review, Google Play Store is not installed, but it may be added at a later date in a firmware upgrade. The Linux operating system can be booted into with the 16 gigs micro SD card. If you are familiar with emulation station on other devices, then you will be right at home. 
The computers and consoles can be easily browsed and by default there are many set up and ready to go. Included are all of the great 8 and 16 bit systems and later consoles such as Dreamcast, Playstation, Saturn and Playstation Portable. On to some emulator testing. Where possible we will be comparing the Android and Linux performance if there are emulators for both. We start off with the Sega Saturn emulator Yabba Shanshiro on Android. With no frame skipping on Sega Rally Championship, it crawls at an unplayable pace. However, with Sexy Parodius, it is far more playable, but it does show some noticeable frame drops. Frame skipping didn't seem to work for me, but it should make the games more playable. On the Linux OS, the Saturn emulator seems to use frame skipping, and Sega Rally is far more playable, but you can see the frame skipping. Sexy Parodius runs great now and with less noticeable frame skips. Next up is N64 Plus FZ on Android. We can't show any certain branded games for reasons, but we found the performance to definitely vary between the games you're playing. For example, on Rampage we were in the 40 FPS area while on Road Rash 64 it was more in the 20s to 30s. Enabling frame skipping we all get it running closer to 60 or maybe try a different emulator. Linux performance seems to fare better with games running at around 60 FPS for the most part. I couldn't tell if there was a lot of frame skipping, but the performance does seem to be better than the Android OS. PlayStation emulation is pretty much perfect on both Android and Linux. I did not see any frame drops whilst I tried a bunch of games. For comparison, here is Ridge Racer 4 running on both Android and Linux. Dreamcast emulation seems to be very good on Android OS with games running at a stable 60fps. But as you will notice, if you change the resolution settings to widescreen, it will stretch the game to fit the display which looks horrible. I recommend leaving it at a 4-3 ratio. Unfortunately on Linux, the performance takes a stumble with games running in the mid 40s area. I would expect this to be fixed in an update to the OS. For the popular handhelds, I did not have any issues with frame drops. We are playing Sonic Advance 3 and it's running very well and also looks great on the screen. And on the dual screen system, we are playing FIFA 2011. Apart from not being able to switch the full screen, you probably can change this in the settings, it plays very well. Now onto the PlayStation Portable and the great PPSS PP emulator. On Android, we had far greater performance thanks to Vulcan graphics support. This overall works better than OpenGL, so we recommend changing to Vulkan in the settings. Tekken 6 blazes along at mostly 50 to 60 frames per second, and we did not notice any major issues. We tried a bunch of different games and got very good results. Unfortunately, God of War has still not reached that magical 60 frames per second. We were getting from late 20s to early 40s FPS depending on how busy the scene was at the time. On Linux, the performance is far worse on God of War, with the FPS struggling to get to the late 20s area. Other games are more playable, but this definitely needs some improvement in a future update. The Dolphin emulator is only available on Android. We tried a number of games, and apart from some basic games, we did not get near 60 FPS. For Burnout 2, we were mostly in the 30s with occasional low 40s. For Soul Calibur 2, we are getting mid to late 20s for the most part. I checked the settings and couldn't really get the performance to improve anymore. HDMI output works in both Android and Linux. 
on Android, it is essentially plug in and it does all the work for you. On Linux, you will need to boot up, insert the HDMI cable, go into the settings and change the audio to HDMI, then reboot. Then if you want to go back to playing on the handheld, you have to redo all those settings. Other than the Linux issue with the audio, HDMI output seems to work very well. So overall, the Ambonic RG552 hardware is good, but far from perfect in regards to the software. I think some more care, attention and time would have resolved a lot of these issues, especially with the Linux performance side of things. Ambonic has assured us that an update to Linux is coming, so we will revisit it in another video if the issues have been fixed or at least improved. We would also like to see some improvements to the Android OS, in particular Google Play Store to be added so you can easily add and update your apps. There is also an issue with the white analog stick not being recognised which we have notified Ambonic about. The issues are essentially software based so we expect improvements over time from Ambonic or most likely from the real unsung heroes who work hard on custom firmwares. I do expect to see massive improvements from them especially and their custom firmware. That wraps up our review of the Ambonic RG552, we hope you have found it useful. You can learn more and order yours today at droix.co.uk, check the links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next one.